Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Ignite with me where we're connecting good smoke, uh, good smokes with good people. <clears throat> uh, I have another Rocky today, a very beautiful, uh, I mean that's solid, it is called The Edge. Now my understanding is it's a fairly new blend that they only recently Released, okay, so this is the 20th anniversary. Now I could be, I guess I could be wrong. I, I don't know. I think I think it is a new blend, though. Pretty sure. I hope I, I hope I'm right. But I believe I've seen it advertised as that. Now the wrapper, the the band or the band here is super cool. It has like a frosted metal look to it, frosted metallic look. So it's super cool. That's awesome. Uh, this is one I've had, and as I recall, I really enjoyed this one. So, you can pick these up at Vitola Cigars. Okay, take that band off. And it's, I mean, they have such embellishment on the band. It's crazy, man. It is, again, huge rocky guy. Um, all of the ones that I've got lined up, I have the DBS, I've mentioned that before. I have, um, oh, I can't remember what it was, age two years. I have to get, I have to show it to them. But, um, I don't know why. Okay. Oh, yes. No, I, I don't. Yeah, no, I'm getting that in the white label mixed up. I'm sitting here getting really confused. Okay. So, and we got a really cool find to show you from the back page. Um, I'm going to show you that in just a minute. Got to put some this butane. Okay. You have to let it set for a minute. That's it. Let's get in there. I'm going to show you this. This was my father's. It's a machete. Machete. And it's this is very old. This is back when they made something that was worth a crap. Um, it's a bolo knife, hand forged. Made a big steal. I've been offered money for this. Um, of course, it's not for sale. I consider it like an heirloom. Uh, now, the handle is it's old enough to where the, the rivets that go through the handle that hold the handle on. The pieces of the handle are intact. So that's there. But it's actually. If you take this tape off, the handle, the, the scales will come off of it. So I have to have that taped on. I got an ace of spades wrapped up in that ball. Why not make this kind of cool? And all that is is some leather strips with some 22 LRs clamped on the end of it. Kind of makes a cool sound. That's something from the back cave that I really dig. It's one of my favorite things in there, actually. Old school, man. Old school. But yeah, no, let's try this thing. No. <sighs> there we go. I'm going to click it a few times. I'm just going to lock that up. Again, we're looking to get that. Not too close. I'm kind of a friendly reminder always to mention those of you who are new. Never put the thing right up on it, or push it right up on it. It's more powerful than you think it is, and depending on what kind of torch you're using, they have the bigger they are, the more powerful they are. Uh, you can get torches at any real cigar lounge. Um, you can get them at R and R. Uh, R and R has the ones I like. Um, they have the Rocky Patel lighters, but they get expensive. There's different ones that get very expensive. I know at Vitola they got some. For fifty, they have some interesting ones, you know, you know, items that go for a lot of money. I also need to do one a video where I do human talk about humidors and how to keep your cigars fresh. Okay, in fact, um, and things you can do if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money. But if you like, if you're like me and you like to smoke at the house in private, 
um, you're going to maybe want a humidor. Those are the people that want to invest in humidor. There are different levels of investment. And it doesn't have, you don't have to have like an official humidor either. The beauty of it is that you can buy boxes, empty boxes, for like five bucks. They, they range from five to 20 bucks, depending on the brand <coughs> of, um, it depends on the, the brand of cigar and how nice the box is. You're not going to get a Rocky Patel box for anything less than 20 bucks. Most of them won't do that, okay? I need to show you some boxes because I've collected them, and they are fantastic boxes, beautiful boxes. In fact, that's going to be my video later today. It's just to show you boxes from Rocky Patel. Um, so... Let's give this guy a puff. Again, that's going to be incredibly smooth on the palate. Right off, I'm getting kind of a darker, sort of um, woody taste. It's not earthy, or at least I don't think it is. It's very, it's very light right now. It's very smooth on the palate. You know, it's, that's a good smoke if it's smooth on the palate. That's also very aromatic. Hmm. There's something else there. Let me see that. Maybe some slight leather kind of taste, but it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit darker than the one, um, the 60 decades, um, or at least I think it is. So dark, I mean, darker cigars going to have a heavier taste, a different taste. It's beautifully well-rounded. Well-rounded. There's a sort of wholeness to it. Like it's somehow like a complete... Like a complete set of notes, different taste notes, and they're beautifully synchronized. And I like that about it. That shows you that someone gave a crap about this thing. And make sure that they did it right, and they did. So <clears throat> I can't leave a link for the script or description for that bolo knife. Unfortunately, they don't make them like that anymore. I don't even know who made that. Someone did. Um, but indeed, yeah. I do have a condor machete that I really like. I don't really collect machetes, but I, I don't collect them, but I have like four of them somehow. One of them was my granddad's. That's why I have that. And the other one was left by somebody on when I was in the church system. When I was in the, the four wall system, which is what I call like the Baptist, the Methodist, the Apostolics. So he was, a, he was a delinquent. He left something there on a, a machete. And, he, and so they were like, here, look, take this. And so that's how I have four. And the condor, I just like it. It reminds me of something like a Polynesian cutlass. Um, this is going to be a very specific reference. I'm, I'm a video gamer. In The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, when you have, on the very beginning, where you have to go, <laughs> very specific. Um, you have to go, you have to go into the Forsaken Fortress. You have to get, you know, to get your sister back from this big bird that steals her away. So this, um, they, it takes her to the Forsaken Fortress. It's the Forsaken. <laughs> I always like to poke at things like that. Oh my God, it's the Forbidden Woods. I know they can't go in there with the Forsaken Fortress. It's never like us. It's the woods. 
or <laughs> it's like you know, it's it's not just the ones that stop all the You know, you know, gas and you know, burn, feel burn as we talk about. Okay, so let's make it for you. Anywho, anywho, there's this guy when you when you disarm all the spotlights and you get to the door to the double doors, there's this green dude that he's carrying a little cleaver like thing. It's there's only one dude, there's spikes come up behind you and he's got that little cleaver. It's kinda like that. That's what it's like. I have to show it to you. Uh, I'll try to show you that one next. Then we gotta get into some tomahawks. I only have two. I'm hoping to get more of them eventually. But yeah. Hmm. This is very friendly to the palate. For a first time smoker, I'm going to say that. The Rocky series, to me, is super friendly to, to beginners. But not only is it friendly, it offers you a real experience of what it's about, what, what cigars are really about. Um, you know, these are these are premium cigars, much like they have it all. You know, and and like I say, some some cigars lean they're gonna lean heavier on different elements. Some are gonna be more earthy, some are gonna be spicy, some are gonna have other other types of taste notes that these don't lean super heavy. Okay. Um, thing, something like barbecue sauce. Okay, barbecue sauce is spicy. Okay, there's different types of barbecue sauce. They're all kind of tangy, right? Except for maybe white barbecue sauce. But there's like a mustard-based barbecue sauce, right? Okay. So mustard-based is going to be is going to lean very heavily on tangy. Okay. Whereas if you're doing like a red sauce, a red um, barbecue sauce, it's not necessarily going to lean towards that. Like, you know, mustard and vinegar based sauce is actually, actually, made the same vinegar. Vinegar and mustard based is very tasty, it's very sharp taste. Okay, whereas uh, like a golden barbecue sauce is going to have something like sweet and tangy. Okay, they lean in kind of different directions. Okay, that's what that's like. Hmm. Here comes a helicopter. I wonder if they're looking for somebody. I wonder if that's the police helicopter. I don't know. Well, maybe a slight earthy taste, but I would almost say kind of a cross between woody and earthy. But again, not harsh to the palate. If you want to try a darker cigar, but you don't have to be like overwhelmed. Because like the blue Camacho the, that I tried is going to be a very dark, very much a darker cigar, um, and you're going to, to to get more boldness out of that than you are out of this. It's going to lean more towards bold, and um, you know such like that. Yeah, that blue Camacho was the Ecuador. I have a video on this channel in the update video. Um, but indeed, this is a great smoke. Again, you got that perfectly white ash. It burns really good. This kind of floats on. Very light. Oh wait, hang on. I didn't tell you. My bad. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Camera's up here. You can tell I haven't done this very long. Just very gently flakes off like that. See that? It's not very hard. Not hard to do, but get all of my laptop too. But you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's I mean a fantastic smoke. I like it. 
Yeah. And I think that it's worth a try. I think it's worth your time. As I do all Rockies, I'm, you know, I think that, you know, if you don't try Rocky, you know, you try, try it at least once, you know, and see if you like it. Because it's going to be a, a premium cigar, like I said, it's the premium stuff is the best stuff. Uh, you know, and, and it goes up from there. They have one that's there now. I heard, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, it looks it's a very fancy box. I've already sold two of them. Some of them, some of those cigars have like a, a like this the box, and they have these smaller boxes made out of Spanish cedar, and you, you slide up, slide them open, and there's the cigar inside. Okay, those are going to be more expensive ones. Um, right now, Vitola has uh, some asylums like that, and Monte Cristo's, I think. Monte Cristo is another one I gotta try. There's another one I gotta get into. And because Monte Cristo is a big brand. Um, there's the Monte Cristo Espada. It was very recently featured in the manager's picks at Vitola. They offer manager's picks, those are very wise picks at Vitola. Uh, the manager is the one who picks them out and he tries to make sure that you know take a good selection of cigars, you know, so what he feels to be very top quality cigars. Again, you may disagree, but often amongst these, you know, right recently he had Cerberus by Agnorsa. They have um, that's a blend of cigar. I've had that one. Uh, I can't remember what it's like, but indeed that one's had one of those. Again, I haven't really thought to describe them or, or why I like them to anybody until, you know, they mentioned to me, you know, this a friend of mine mentioned, you know, we don't really, we're trying to figure out our market. We want to want to figure out what sells, you know, and, and that's a lot of what this gentleman, you know, they told me, you know, there's people out there that maybe need some help with this. That's why it's about, and again, this doesn't, this, this channel is not necessarily to promote a given brand or, or store, okay? And it really, it doesn't really take sides. It's who's, who's got the smoke, you know, the smoke that you want. That's what I'm interested in. Vitola uh, has a, a larger humidor and they have locations in Montgomery and different other, other places, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's I have to I have to show you all their locations, but um, Tuscaloosa is just one of them. Your humidors are bigger; they're going to have more options. Okay, they also sell if you're looking for pipe tobacco. Uh, they do sell pipes as well, wooden pipes. They look to be very nice pipes and for a reasonable price, without trying to rob you of everything that you got. They are very simple pipe. I have a a single pipe. Uh, I got a Gandalf. Okay. Um, I got my Gandalf in person and in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. They have a very small tobacco shop there in, in the Gatlinburg Mall. Uh, and so I went up there one year and I thought, you know what, why not? Um, and I thought, you know, it's something to do. Uh, tobacco, pipe tobacco is going to be a different experience than cigars. Okay? And if, if, yeah, I, I lean towards cigars, but I have smoked pipe tobacco. But I got my Gandalf and all that. Um, you know, it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Gandalf is, uh, Gandalfs are, and I call them Gandalfs, they're really called church wardens, and they're not true size. When the cap, back in the the days of the Catholic Church, which again, I, actually, I don't know that I've mentioned this. I don't, I don't like churches. Churches are an enterprise to me. They're, they're a business where people talk and they rant and they rave and people shout out money for them. Okay? They're frauds. They're frauds. And so is the Catholic Church, even unto the Pope. Um, you know, the Pope is not a good person. I wish people understood that. He is a, is a servant of Baal. Uh, Baal, for those of you who don't know, is a false god. He does not exist. Um, it is something that goes back to the you know, days of Enoch and Noah. Um, it, they're descended it, directly from Enoch. Noah, or is, Enoch is Noah's great grandfather. Okay? 
And I've read the Bible cover to cover, page for page, word for word. The things, I mean, the things that they're teaching in these churches are not in the Bible. Like the Trinity, there is no Trinity. Uh, there is no other God beside I know not one. There's not a single other God beside him. That's the end of the Trinity argument right there. Uh, I mean, that's the end. If you, if you take it as it is written, okay, and that's my Bible right up there. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've read that thing. I wore one of them out. Uh, one of them, the spine, will no longer hold the book together. So, um, I'm sitting here telling you there is no Trinity. This 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 veil sent around us in heavens, and they're descended from Noah. That's where the kingdom of Babylon comes from. Back in the days where those and I, I don't know that a whole lot of people have thought about this, but you know before the flood there were peoples that you know you know not that existed here on this earth. Like those are entire nations that were wiped out. There are people. Yeah, I, I call it, I have taken to calling it the old world. The old world is like, you know, pre-flood. There were peoples and languages here that were that are not recognized anywhere in archaeology today. Um, there's things I suspect that they have found, but that's why archaeologists cannot go back past a certain point because there's things back there that the, the Roman government uh, you know, the Pope, the papacy does not want you to know. And uh, things about dragons, for example, I am a believer that dragons exist. I still believe that they're out there. I believe that sea monsters exist. That Bible mentions both of them. I believe that if you were in the right place at the right time, you would be in for a shock. But it's also very telling that no one has seen them. I believe that Bigfoot, and I'm not enforcing, I'm not trying to push it on you to, to make you believe it or anything, far be it from me to impose anything on you, but certainly I believe that, that you know, things like Big Bigfoot, that's, there is no ape man. Apes have limited intelligence. If somebody wanted to go find a gorilla in the Belgian Congo, they know to be on the north bank because there are no gorillas on the south bank of the Congo River. They're on the north bank. Okay? They just drive right up and <laughs> they're, they're not hard to find. Okay, well why haven't we found something that's leaving footprints like that? It's a giant. It's a net. Okay, that's what it is. They still exist. Um, you know, they're the, the children of the fallen ones. They're the children of the fallen angels. They beget unto um, you know, they, they landed on Mount Hermon in the Book of Enoch, uh, and they took women, all of whom they chose, and they beget to them children of what they call the men of renown. Those are the men of renown, the ninth. Now, it's true that they were wiped out by the flood, but all it is is a simple matter of as soon as there's enough people that have reproduced after Noah's time, they just go in and start taking these women again, and then there's a new generation of giants. That's why they're still around. It's only a simple matter, you know? And the days of Enoch were indeed days of great evil, satanic evil. I believe, I believe if you could go back and see it, that you would be shocked, your breath would be taken away by the things that were being done. Um, the angels, the gods, and things like that, the giants, I believe you would be horrified. I would. Um, Certainly, they're not good people. But in the uh, um, I was going, I was talking about Baal. Baal is, um, first of all, is is a enemy of the Lord God. Um, what had happened is after Noah, there were there were descendants after Noah, and one of his grandchildren maybe his great-grandchild, married a woman named Semiramis, and they had a child named Nimrod. Now, we don't know what happened to the father. Okay? Nimrod is said to be a mighty hunter before the Lord. There was a saying about him. That's what the Bible says. Even as Nimrod, uh, of his, or something, I, think, I can't remember exactly, but indeed he is regarded to be a mighty man. Okay? At some point, <coughs> 
it is made clear that Semiramis, the mother of Nimrod, had had sexual relations, and they beget a child named Tammuz, and they composed a a mystery religion, which is why the Bible talks about mystery Babylon the Great. That's why, because it is a strange. She made up essentially a hokey religion to to retain power within their government, because women are not allowed to lead or lead in Babylon. Because, you know, presumably that is the reason you would do such a thing. But she, you know, she is someone that had sex with her son. So. Sorry about that. I had I was interrupted for a moment, um, but yeah, um, you no. Know, Semiramis is you know she's hated. She has many names: the Mother Goddess Athena, Diana, um, Artemis, probably. I think that's one of them. Um, you know, that's. You know, she's she's a goddess. She has basically made herself out to be a god, as has Nimrod. Well, Nimrod, and I don't really know who did it, but and some say Esau. Esau did it. You know, Esau the brother of Jacob, which is not it's not really impossible, is it? It's not really possible because he would have been gone. I would think. Um. Yeah. So so basically. You know, this this dude got killed. He was killed um, in battle by somebody stronger than him, apparently. And he was ripped apart. Um, they had to find the pieces of his body and all that stuff. I don't know. I don't, that's the part that's not really described too much. But, you know... It's at the center of a lot of religions. There's tales like that. Uh, one of them is the story of Osiris. One of them um, talks in Egyptian mythology. There is a very strikingly similar story where a man was killed by his enemy. I think it, I think it was Osiris. I could be wrong. Not into Egyptian myth uh, mythology, but indeed, what had happened is that they had to piece his body back together. They couldn't find a certain appendage. Okay, for his body. Okay, and so you know, she basically, <laughs> I don't know, it might have been something like necrophilia there. I can't, again, not an expert, but they had to piece together this dude's body. Um, nevertheless, he's dead. Okay, Baal is basically the ascended Nimrod. Okay, they believe he is the son. Okay. Um, um, there, there's a song by a German metal band called, uh, I can't really pronounce it, it's spelled S O N N E. Okay. Rammstein is the band. And they talk, they're counting down in it, and they're talking about Here Comes the Sun. So we're just talking about the arrival of Baal, the Antichrist. Okay, now Baal is dead. Okay, but Nimrod is not real. There is no, there is no Nimrod that is alive anywhere. He's been, he's been dead for years and years, not so far back that there is not a single person that could possibly, even unto the Pope of Rome, dictate to anyone the circumstances of his death. He has been in hell for years, years and years. Okay, and so much that nobody even really knows this tale. It survived on the breath of the wind, I suppose, but in bits and pieces, and, and very few people have an accurate understanding of it. Uh, but indeed, you know, essentially that would mean that <laughs> the Pope is, you know, serving someone that has some kind of wonky genes. Definitely. Um, so. You know, it is what it is, but regardless, I think it's funny, but, and, but, you know, and a little bit, you know, it's funny, but it's, it's kind of it's a little bit sad, too. but that's the basis for the truth. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You know, Semiramis sat there and claimed 
that, you know, the rays of the sun, you know, caused her to conceive. Okay, she lied. She lied. <laughs> like, what do you mean? The <laughs> like, <laughs> you mean you? Yeah, no. But these people believed it, and that's why you know this is where the Tower of Babylon comes from, the, the tower and such like that that they were building under heaven. These are the people that built it, you know, and so on and so forth. And indeed, it is a mighty kingdom. No one's arguing whether it's mighty. Is indeed the mightiest kingdom on the face of the earth, and it still exists. Um, I am a person that believes that we live in that right now. I mean, Tuscaloosa is a Roman city. Okay, it is a Roman city that serves the papacy ultimately. Okay, not directly per se, but indeed, you know, more or less, this is a province of the Roman Empire. Uh, Alabama is a province of the Roman Empire. They say all roads lead to Rome, and that's the truth. That is absolutely the truth. But <clears throat> you know. I don't, I don't go to church because that's what they serve. That is what they serve. The mentions of Baal, Semiramis, and Thomas, there are mentioned in the Bible. Um, there's the one where they got the people that are serving Tammuz. That he talks about digging a hole in the wall, and God is showing him, you know, you see what they're doing. They have a cult inside the church, basically, and, and he wants to know why all these women are weeping for Tammuz. Okay, Tammuz is there, been there. Okay, um, and and then there's you know the, the Baal Peor, same guy. Baal is represented by a bull. Okay, those of you who are ardent students of history know about the Ishtar Gates. Okay, which lead into the eighth ward, the inner ward of Babylon. They have massive walled city. Okay. And so the Ishtar gates have a bull and they have, I think, a sphinx on it, okay, or some kind of other animal that is just painted with lap of, uh, paint made out of lapis lazuli. And indeed, it has a bull on it and such like that. That's their, that's Semiramis and her son, basically. Um, so it's a little bit disturbing, to say the least. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> and all these churches are really doing is they're presenting the same message different ways. Okay, they're 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 telling the same story over and over in the interest of the Catholic Church, which is of course headed by the Pope of Rome, the Black Pope, which is the Jesuit general, and the Jesuits themselves, which are the oversight of. That, you know, these churches, you can't run a church and just teach whatever you want. They will shut you down if you start preaching the Bible. Okay? It is an enterprise and it's about money. And that's why so many preachers are caught in scandals, pedophilia, rapes, murders, you know, things like that, hypocrisy. Okay? And, and these people mindlessly endorse what their pastor says. The words that come out of his mouth, that's it. Even if the Bible doesn't say it, that's the truth in their mind. Unquestionable, unswerving, I've seen it. And if you ever stand up to them for any reason, if you go against the status quo, you will be reviled. Some people have been hurt or even killed. I have seen it. I've seen people. There was a purge at a Baptist church I was a part of for years. I was, uh, was purged in 2015. Uh, right after a gentleman whose name I'm going to protect, uh, he, is, he was purged the year before for speaking out against the pastor and what he was doing there uh, because he had turned the church into a business, which it always was, but, but it had become so blatant that, that those that were in the church, a few people that were there, were simply, I mean, overrun. And they formed factions, those loyal it's kind of like politics. There's conservative and then there's progressive. Okay, and I don't get into politics, but that's that's kind of what it's like. There are those in favor and those not, and they, they cause vicious uh, fights, vicious infightings in these churches. I've seen it. I've seen people threatened. I've seen people assaulted, uh, and it happens often every day somewhere in the city. 
and we're not even like a, a major city like New York or anything like that, but it happens here. There are victims of these churches that they create. But now, um, But um, Baal, Baal Peor, I keep kind of going back and forth. The Jews were killed for that when they were amongst the Moabites after wandering in the wilderness. They, they were for a time amongst them, is my understanding. And they took women from the Moabites who were ardent servants of Baal Peor. Okay? These women led these Jews, these men, out by the nose. Okay, and sooner or later, there they were worshiping Baal Peor. Okay, you know, like the Jews, the Jews often do. They follow him, then they fall away. They follow him, then they fall away. That's how people are. It's not just them, uh, but it, the Bible says they are stiff-necked people. And uh, I believe, I believe that's the incident where they, where he says, "Every man take." Yeah, that is it. That is it. Uh, he says, every man take his sword and kill his brother. And they, they whipped out swords, them that were loyal to Jehovah Rapha, and they killed them. They, they dropped these people in the streets over Baal Peor. That's how vicious, how violent it gets, because he is hated with everything. He's, he's not, he's, there's, there's a fallen angel behind it, but Nimrod was a man, not a god. He was never a god. You know, there were never gods or all his people. How do you think they ripped him apart? Can't rip apart a god. They ripped him apart because he was, you know, a person. Just like Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth could very clearly be killed. How do you think they crucified him? <laughs> I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the stuff like that that these churches don't believe can happen. Why did it happen? It's written in the Bible. They dragged him up to Golgotha. And they and they crucified him up there. He died. He bowed his head and he died. Okay? He said it was finished and he died. Okay? It's recounted in all of the Gospels. Okay? All of the Gospels, the Gospel according to Luke, to John, to Matthew, is all recounted. Okay? They all agree. He was dragged up there and they crucified him. Very simple. Easy to understand. But you'd be surprised. They don't they don't agree with that. They agree that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was a god. He was not. Okay? That's why, um, you know, the, the truth of it is, is that God's Spirit was in His Son, which is mentioned in the Bible. Okay? It's different when it's a spirit in, inside that person. Okay? So, like, you know, when He was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River, He has, you know, there was a spirit that came down in bodily form as a dove and it rested on. That's the Holy Ghost. That's, that's the spirit of his Father. Landed on him, and that is the reality. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay? And that's why. Okay? Jesus is very much a person. Okay? You, they didn't kill God on the cross. They killed his son. That's, that's who they killed. God survived that whole thing. Never died. Never was even close to that. Um, but the churches don't understand that. And you can talk to them to to their blue in the face. It remains, the truth in their minds remains what their pastor says. I no longer go to church. Right, we have mega churches these days that are engaging in what's called ecumenism, which is the, the plot by the papacy to, to bring together all of the world's religions. And that's what's going to serve the Antichrist. So, but yeah, at Buddhism, uh, any any Buddhism, you know, Hinduism, and all these different religions, you know, Orthodox, the Orthodox churches, they are slowly drawing together these threads, and mega churches are an instrument of that. Okay, because once they get you in these mega churches, they're what that means is they're consolidating these beliefs, and in order for these smaller churches to compete with concerts and essentially raves, uh, you know, and storytelling and, and small groups and things like that. 
in order to do this, smaller churches are forced to adapt to their standards. So you see how they're all kind of drawn into it. It's a competition. So they, so these churches are no longer cool. They're lame. These country churches. So, so what they do is, and their their people will leave. It. They'll leave those churches, and they have. I mean, they still do. Uh, and they, they get drawn into the, these big churches where these new and exotic doctrines are introduced that are not talked about in the Bible. And, and you know, that's that's the way that they're, they're terraforming the human mind, these people. They're indoctrinating them to, to great, in a lot of cases, great acts of violence and such like that. And you can't tell them, no. You can't tell them. That's, that's how it is. You go against the pastor, they'll kick you out. And, and some of them, I, I know that people have been killed by it. Boy, I, I've met those kinds of people. Uh, that would kill you over opposing your pastor. I'm thinking of one right now. It's actually two of them. One of them's a cop. So, but it happens. It happens. <laughs> the funny thing about the cop. Is there a sin? The cop. Is to, for a church to use a comp, did you know that's illegal? According to the Constitution, which says there is to be no of church and state. The reason is because when our fathers came here, they came seeking refuge. One of the main reasons is to seek refuge from the religious persecution because what had happened in Europe is a man named, a German man named Martin Luther nailed the 95 Thesis on the door of his church and it kicked off the Protestant Reformation. Protestant, the root word of which is protest. Okay, and so they're protesting the Catholic Church. That's what Protestants are today. Okay, recently, and I, I could be wrong, they might have had some sort of reconciliation. Although I do believe the Catholic Church had a, a certain gentleman killed over that. He's a very prominent speaker for the Protestant churches. I believe he was killed by the Catholic Church, assassinated uh, for speaking out against them. The Protestant Church is the Catholic Church, they hold to the Catholic faith. There are things that they that they stood against, okay? Um, one of the big issues of which was, you know, the Bible. Well, we want, they want the Bible, okay? Um, so, so, they want to be able to, to read the Bible and such like that. They have a translator because, you know, that they, they want it in their hands. Okay? Well, the Catholic Church doesn't do protest. As you know, the Catholic Church has killed so many across Europe. People are very quick to forget that. They, they took swords and they killed people. They're crusades. They're sanctioned wars. Um, you know, that, that's what a crusade is. Crusade, most people think it means holy war. It does not. Does not mean holy war. It means it's a sanctioned war by the emperor, the Roman emperor, which is the pope. Okay, he has sanctioned a war in favor of his self-interest and the Catholic faith. Catholicism, the word of which is a Greek word called Catholicos, which is uh, universal. That's what it means. It means universal, all-encompassing. It is a religion that is universally imposed. Mark the word imposed. Okay, they impose it by the sword. That's how they do it. They fight. They they're, they're um, great violence. Send them. They are greatly violent. I watched a movie recently where it portrays this, and most people probably don't look at this. There's an old movie called Zulu. Okay, and it's it depicts the Zulu tribesmen of Africa against the British. Okay, in Africa, that's the, uh, you know, it's, it's, I can't remember what they call it, maybe anglo Zulu War. I can't remember what it's called. But basically, it's, a, it's something in British history where, you know, they, in the name of civilizing what they perceive to be savages, in the name of doing it, they, they declared war and they killed them. Okay, and they took their leaders captive and such like that, and they killed them, okay? Those are things that happen to them. 
Okay, uh, they were invaded. They were they're invaded, and that's not anything. Jesus never said invade people. Okay, he never said that. Okay, there are certain reasons why the Jews had to go to war. Okay. In some cases, it was because they were being encroached upon. They, they were wicked men. The Jews have served as the sword in God's hand in times past. But at the same time, he has also used other people against them, like Babylon. You know? Um, and such like that. But what happens is in this movie, in the opening scenes, there's this Catholic guy and his, and his daughter sitting there amongst these people. Okay? Uh, and these these tribesmen come in and they say, "Hey, we, you know, they've invaded us or something to that effect." And this Catholic church, you know, the Catholic priest is reporting all of this to the British government. Okay, they sent in the army to deal with them. The Catholic church shows up, and if they would not bow down to the Catholic church, they send in the British army to make them do it. Okay, and that's what they've done all over the place. Uh, the Holy Roman Empire, which is the German Empire, there's, a lot of people don't remember this, the Prussian people, there's the old Prussian people. The Prussian people are, are Slavic, which means that they are more like Polish or like Russian, Russians. Okay? They, they fought a whole war for that land. The Catholic Church, they, they would not bow to the Catholic Church. Uh, and they went in and they killed those people. They made them bow. And, and it's, it's about supremacy. And they build these churches in their land. And they say, you got to go to church. Okay? Because they had to indoctrinate them. It's programming. It's a psychological thing. It's, it's getting people where they, have, where they are. And they, they pose as a force for good. But they're not. People do things as a means to the end. People will invest in things for years and have malevolent intent the whole time. That's that's a real thing that happens. Um, they they do that. They know there's going to be a payoff. Absolutely, there are people just like that all over the city. Yeah. Yeah. First, the Catholic priest shows up, and if they won't take the olive branch of peace, they shoot them. So what they do, okay? It's imposing. They impose it to then make them do it, okay? And then they modern when they modernize these countries, they quash the demands of those people in favor of self-interest. So what they did to the Native Americans, uh, the Native Americans, the Polynesians, okay? Uh, you know, the, the, that being of course the Hawaiian people. You know, are imposed upon. They were. They were invaded. They were made to that. Okay? To the Catholic Church. So, now, you want to update on this. I'm getting maybe some chocolatey notes kind of here, too. Some of them have that. Maybe, but very slight. If they are, yeah, this is a good start. Give this guy a try. Um, the edge is carried by R and R and Vitola. I think it is. I've seen. Yeah, I have. I've seen them both, as well as sixty decades. That's it all. I think. But yeah, you know, these are things that that matter. You know, people need to be informed about the churches and its heresy. And that's why no Christian that calls himself that goes to church. Because they know what it is. It's an enterprise. It's a brand. You know? Um, they're, they're trying to tie all these religions together so that they come to the same conclusion. And that's the religion that will serve the Antichrist. In the new world order, they have dreams of this place called Elysium that they're going to build at the expense of the peasantry, which would be like me and you. Okay, if you're not making millions of dollars, you have no place in the empire. Your place is to live in utter dependency to people that are, in truth, dependent on you. 
Okay? And that will never change, of course. But, you know, it is what it is. But anywho, such is the world we live in. It is what it is. It's a sad world. I've seen seen so many people get hurt by the judges. Anywho, I'm going to take a short recess and come back with my thoughts. Awesome. Hey guys, I'm back. I have good things to report about this smoke. This smoke is going to, as you go down the stick, you know, I've talk, talked to you about Maurice Raval's Bolero. You know, it builds and it builds and it builds. And as you, as you smoke the cigars, as you smoke most cigars, what's going to happen is that they're going to transform. Okay? They're going to unfurl as you go. Okay? This one is very pleasant. Again, it leaves the palate very clean. Okay? Um, it's going to lean in on the spicy. Okay? Which, of course, as you know, I am on King's Mice. Okay? Um, you know, that's, that's for me. At one point, I had a little bit of tinge on my lips. Nothing overpowered. It's not, it's not like the Ecuador, the Camacho Ecuador, which is a very dark and very bold cigar. It has spice to it as well. Um, you know, I, I found this to be extremely enjoyable. Uh, and I hope you do too. Give, give the edge a try. Um, you know, and so on and so forth, you know, um, see, I did want to say a few things, you know, my, my message here about how I talked about the Catholic Church and Dale and all the stuff like that, it's not, that's not endorsed by anyone, no one's paying me to do this, and I don't expect to be paid to do these videos, and I don't expect anything from these companies. In no way do these companies, Cutters, uh, Ricola, or are not endorse my message. But, you know, I thought I'd give us something to talk about, something to think about. You know, here's one other thing I'm going to leave in the description, and that is going to be um, something having to do with the Pope that I thought would be interesting. Um, there's a statue in his throne room. Okay, is he demands to be called his holiness. There's nothing holy about him. Um, there is, you know, he's a servant of Baal. You know, he has a statue that he calls Jesus leaping through the flames. Um, that statue behind his throne, that sculpture, is a symbol of uh, the Bachman, uh or Rimbad behind his throne. Okay? Um, and I wanted to show you all that, to show you who he is. Uh, it's not a mistake. People don't make mistakes. When they make statues and stuff like that, they're not making mistakes. They're intentionally doing something. And if you mirror one half of that statue onto the other half, it forms the skull of the body. So I want to show you that. But I hope everybody has a great day and is blessed. You know, don't let it drag you down too much. And I know that we live in dark times in, in this day and age. Yeah. Wars and rumors of wars popping up, you know. But I hope that this incites very productive discussion and that people can share their ideas here and that, that people will be respected here and not really out to necessarily spread a message of hate but awareness. And that's something that I would like to do, you know. That's something I have a passion for, but never to, to force someone. Believe what I believe ever, or I mean, I hope that everyone is safe and has a great day and be blessed, okay?